Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to work our first problem where we're going to have a hypothesis test involving two means. And again, as we uh, talked about in the last section, uh, for this class of problem, we're going to have two means. We're going to have a large number of samples. That means greater than 30 samples uh, for, for the uh, testing that we're doing. Uh, and then we're also going to assume that these samples are independent. So we have two groups, uh, two samples that we're pulling from two different groups of people. We don't have any dependency going on or anything like that. Okay, as usual, when we get a real problem we can sink our teeth into, in general, hopefully, we can, you know, uh, solidify what we've been learning. So let's read that here. A researcher thinks that uh, grocery shoppers spend more when they haven't eaten. To test, he samples 41 shoppers who did not eat breakfast. These people spend an average of $72.27 with a standard deviation of $8.05. Then, 52 shoppers who did eat breakfast spend an average, uh, for his sampling anyway, of $69.43 with a standard deviation of $9.22. Test the claim with 95% level of confidence. I love this type of problem because it's immediately uh, something you can sink your teeth into. It's not abstract, it's something everyone can understand. We've all gone to the grocery store, you know, and when, when you're hungry, it just seems like you wanna buy everything. I'm gonna grab a steak over here, and baked potato over here, I'm gonna grab all kinds of things that I would not have otherwise bought, right? So this researcher, his hypothesis really is that when you don't eat and you go to the store, you actually spend more money. Now, if you look at the raw data in here, it says that he tested by sampling 41 shoppers who did not eat and they spent $72.27 compared with people that did eat breakfast that spent uh, $69 and some change. So on the surface, it does look like what he's saying is true, but you cannot draw conclusions like that because you have to factor in the sample size. Uh, of these groups here. You also have to factor in uh, what the spread of the data is, I and mean, you have really wild outliers, and, and a few other things, and that's what the whole process of hypothesis testing is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the information out of here, we're going to write it on the board, we're going to sketch, we're going to find our p-values, and we're going we're to uh, figure out if we reject this null hypothesis. Since we're going to use p-values, uh, and by the way, we are going to use p-values here because since this is uh, two means, large number of samples, independent samples. Uh, we're going to use a normal distribution. You have a choice. You can use p-values or rejection regions. Basically, does the same thing. We typically use p-values when we can. It's more common. Uh, it's more commonly going to be asked for you to do it that way on test. So, just to remind you of something that you may or may not have forgotten, um, when you're dealing with p-values, if your p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, then you reject the null hypothesis. I'm just